I'm going to explain autocorrelation using three examples. We're going to start with a mathematical definition, and then I'm going to give an intuitive way of understanding what this autocorrelation is and why it's called autocorrelation. So let's look at the equation. We're considering random processes, or you could think of them as random signals. We're going to label them by X. That's the random signal is X. And we're looking at it at two different times, T1 and T2. And the definition says you've got to multiply the values together at the two different times. And this is a complex conjugate. The examples we're going to do today are real values, so we don't have to worry about that. Uh, and then you take the expected value. Well, that's like taking the average. OK, let's look at an example to really try and give this some meaning and understand it. Let's think about a random data waveform where the data is binary data represented in the waveform by plus one volt or minus one volt. And the data is random data. It's independent and identically distributed. So here's a possible waveform where you send each data bit for a capital T time. This is the time. So this is one of the waveforms that could be possible. Well, of course, it's random. Uh, let's look at other different possible waveforms that could have happened. Well, here's one and here's one. And there's another aspect about these waveforms we're going to have in this example where the timing is also random. So you can see this one starts its, its uh, clock for a one at this time here, but this one is offset and this one is also offset. So let's think about random waveforms, digital waveforms with random time offsets. Now let's come back and think about autocorrelation. How do we calculate this? Well, let's look and let's first of all think at a, the simple case where T1 equals T2 equals zero time. So that's down this axis here. We've got to take the expected value, which means the average over all these different possible waveforms. So let's look at time equals zero. Then these of course are the same if T1 equals T2. And in this first example here, it's plus one. In the second example, it's minus one. So this would be minus one times minus one, which also gives plus one. And in the third example, also minus one times minus one. So in all the different scenarios, when T1 equals T2 equals zero, you're going to get a value of plus one. So the expected value will be plus one. So let's plot that on a plot here for the autocorrelation. And in this case, this system is stationary. Uh, and for more information about stationary systems, uh, pro uh, random processes, check out the description below this video. You'll find uh, descriptions uh, and other videos. So in this case, the only thing that is important is the difference between the two times, between T1 and T2. So I'm going to call that TOR. So again, coming back to the example we first started with was when T1 equaled T2 equaled zero. And in that case, tor will be zero. So on this axis here of the autocorrelation function, we're looking at the time difference equals zero. And we've said, we've worked out that we can see that in this example, the expected value will equal plus one. So that's this point here. Now let's plot it for some other times. So let's take a time here that's, let's say, take a time that's bigger than capital T. And uh, so of a difference between the two. So let's keep T1, being zero, and let's look at T2 being a number bigger than capital T. And for this, I'm going to pick, just by way of an example, I'm going to pick this time here, down this edge of the ruler here, so this value of time. So now let's look at what the autocorrelation tells us at this time. Well here we've now got, don't forget T1 equals zero, so T2 is here, we've got to multiply these together. In this case, it's one times one. But in this second case, it's negative one times positive one. So this will give us, when we multiply them together, will give us negative one. This gave us positive one, this is giving us negative one. And here in this example here, it's also going to be negative one times positive, which is going to give us negative one. And if you can imagine all the different possibilities of all the different waveforms, I've only drawn three here, but all the different waveforms, I think you can convince yourself that in half of the cases, it will be a plus one that you're getting, because it'll either be plus one at both places or minus one at both places. Half the time it'll be like that. The other half of these realizations, you will have a different value at those two time slots. One will be negative, the other positive. And they will average out 
to cancel each other because half the time you'll be getting plus one, half the time you'll be getting minus one. So the expected value will be zero. So here, this time, we're going to be getting zero. Now I've only picked that one arbitrarily. What we just saw in that example holds for any of the times that are bigger than capital T. So you can go along here and you can look for yourself or even the negative times bigger than minus T or more negative than minus T, you'll see the same thing. And what we can show is that this gives us an autocorrelation function that looks like this here. Now, Again, I'm going to come to the intuition in a minute, but I just want to make sure that we've got a good understanding of what the actual plot is going to look like. And for, the, for more details on why it's actually a triangle here, again, there's a video below where we calculate this in a lot more detail. Now, what? come back to this autocorrelation. This kind of makes sense. I think intuitively this makes sense. The waveforms are random. And so you would think just by the sound of the name autocorrelation, the auto refers to the fact that it's the same type of signal. It's all X, it's all the same types of waveforms and you're comparing at different times. And the correlation makes you think of how much the knowing about one at one time is gonna tell you about the outcome at another time. And that's sort of what correlation leads you to think about. And in this example, when we are far apart in time, the digital data is different and you can expect that they're not going to be related to each other because the data is random. And it, it's not only not surprising, but it actually makes intuitive sense to see that the autocorrelation is going to be zero. So when you're looking at times a long way away, you would expect zero correlation. But actually, that's something that can easily trick you. And let's look at another example where we also look at digital data, but where we don't get zero when we're looking at times that are far apart. So let's look at this example here. Now this is exactly the same types of waveforms here, except instead of being plus and minus one volt, we're now looking at one and three volts. So they're still the same distance apart because these were two apart and this is still two apart, the levels. Um, and we're still going to have the same scenario. I'm not going to draw all the different types of waveforms. I'm just drawing one to show us here what we're uh, thinking about now. The only difference is the voltage levels. Now let's think about what the autocorrelation function is. It all made sense in this case that there'd be zero here because they were independent IID data. Will it still be the same in this case? But in fact, it's not the case. And let's understand why. Let's see why. So again, let's think about the case when T1 equals T2 at zero. Then of course here, what are we gonna get now? We're either gonna get three times three because this will be the same and we're multiplying them together. So we'll either get nine, a value of nine, or we're gonna get a value of one. And so the average of those two is the addition of them divided by two. So nine plus one is 10 divided by two is five. So now we're getting at the tor equals zero, we're now getting a value of five for this definition for our autocorrelation at when the time differences are zero, when they're the same. So what about now when we've got a big time difference, the same thing we thought about over here. So when we've got a big time difference, now in this case, we're either gonna be getting three times three or one times one or one times three or three times one. And the average of those is four. So now we've got an autocorrelation function that looks like this. It still has a very similar shape, the same shape to the other one, but now instead of being zero correlation when you've got a large time difference, now we have a correlation of four when there's a large time difference. So that is counterintuitive to this idea that the data was independent, therefore you would be zero correlation. Now we've still got the data independent, but you don't have zero correlation anymore. So what's going on? And how do we think about this? It seems to be counterintuitive. Well, one way to think about it, and this is the way I prefer to think about autocorrelation, intuitive way, is to think of looking at this formula and thinking, well, it's really, a squared voltage and a squared voltage gives you power. And so here, certainly when 
the tor equals zero, it's the same signal squared, it definitely is the power. This signal here was centered around zero, it only had plus and minus one, the power was one. Whereas over here, we've now got more voltage, if we're thinking the vertical line is the voltage, uh, which it is, then we've now got more power. And so that makes sense that this is five. When they're offset with a big value of tor, you've still got the randomness between you could have a three and a three or a three and a one and a one and a three and so on. Uh, but now because each one of them is above zero, you're now getting a positive number. And so one way to think about this, the way I prefer to think about it, is what I call a shared directional power, an average shared directional power. Because these are multiplying voltages at different times. That's why I think of it as a shared power because it's, it's got some element of the voltage at one time and an element of the voltage at another time. So I'm thinking of that as a shared power. It's a power because it's multiplied. It's an average because it's the expected value. So that's why I prefer to think of this intuitively as an average shared directional power. Now, why do I say directional power? Well, because when these are all positive, you get a positive number here. When these includes positive and negative, the negative cancels the positive and you're left with zero. That's why it's important that it's a directional power. So you're including the fact if you've got negative values, they are actually gonna pull you down. Uh, it's not all just adding power. These are negative powers if you've got negative. Okay, so I really do prefer this concept of the average shared directional power. And let's just look at the third example. Uh, these two examples have been stationary random processes. Now I'm going to give an example of a non-stationary random process. And just think in that case, again, it's another situation where if you just think of correlation as being how one part of the signal is going to tell you about another part, which is natural to think of from the English word correlation, that you're going to get tricked up if you're thinking about this example over here. Again, it'll be another example where it's going to lead us to want to call it shared average directional power. So here's an example of the temperature over a year. Let's say this is every day over a year with spring, summer, autumn, and winter. And let's just say I've simplified it here where you've got small variations through each of the seasons and then a dramatic jump between the seasons. I'm just going to make a simplification and, and just for the purposes of this example here. So spring has, uh, let's say, an average daily temperature of five degrees Celsius, same as autumn in this case, in this example, summer 25 uh, and winter one, let's say, has a, an average temperature of one in winter. Now let's think about autocorrelation for this case here. It's not going to anymore just be related to the difference between the times because it's non-stationary. So let's look at two examples. Let's look at a time in summer, so this is XTSU for summer, and a time comparing it with a time in winter. So now we've got our autocorrelation equation. We multiply those two, take the average, and in this case, we'd be getting a number that's gonna be like 25, you're picking it one, this time in summer, and then the, this time here is in winter, which is about one. So you're having 25 times one. So the autocorrelation between a time in summer and a time in winter will give you 25 in this example. Now also, the same number comes, 25, when you look at the autocorrelation between a time in autumn and a time in spring, because these are both five in this example. So I've picked these carefully just to show and make really make this point clear. We've got now two cases, quite different, both giving the same value of autocorrelation. These two waveforms here, autumn and spring, they, if you've got a time in spring and a time in autumn, they are correlated in the sense that you're gonna have the same numbers and it gives you this value of autocorrelation. But this other case where the values are quite different also gives the same value. And in this case, if I tell you a time in summer, it doesn't tell you anything. It's not correlated anywhere near in the same conceptual way as a time in winter. However, the numbers come out to be the same. So again, if you're thinking like that, I think you can be confused. Again, I prefer to think of it in terms of the average shared directional power. 
And I think you can see that that makes sense here. You can see that there's going to be an average shared power between spring and autumn of 25. And there's also going to be an average shared power between summer and winter of 25. And if you're just even just looking at this graph, you can be thinking, yes, they're sharing that amount of power. More of it is in summer, sure, than there is in winter. Um, but it's an average shared power of 25. You can see that that would come out to be the same number as spring and autumn, if you're thinking of it in terms of an average shared directional power. So that's the way I prefer to think about autocorrelation. I hope this video has given you some more insights. If it has, give the video a thumbs up, it helps others to find the video. Check out the description below. You'll find a full listing of other videos on the channel. And you'll also find a link to a web page which has all the videos categorized. And of course, subscribe to the channel for more videos.